Hey guys, Mike from Fortinet Guru here. This is going to be a basic video explaining how to set up a dial-up based IPsec tunnel. Um, reasons for using dial-up based IPsec would be you don't know the distant ends IP address because it can change or you have remote users that want to use Forta client or some other client to connect into your network using IPsec. Um, one thing I will say, I tend to prefer deploying SSL VPN capabilities instead of IPsec because a lot of networks are starting to lock down the ability of IPsec to flow through the firewall. So you can go to a site, be ready to log in, but unable to do so because they block IPsec. So that's just you know little little heads up. This video is going to be a brief description on how to set up a split tunnel IPsec connection. Uh, basically, what split tunnel is is that whatever subnet you're trying to access over the tunnel that's the only traffic that'll go through said tunnel so if you're surfing the internet checking your email and whatnot it's still going to go through your normal internet connection whereas if you're trying to access uh, the remote subnet of whatever network you're trying to hit it'll be the only traffic that flows through so i have a Forta wi-fi 61e here it's basically default configuration um, things to consider when you're setting up an a VPN access capability is one you need user groups um, and you need to ex exercise extreme prejudice when creating these or per graining access to users in this group so because basically you're going to give them the keys to the castle they're going to be able to get in so I have my 61e here First things first is you want to create your group. I've already done so. I just created a dummy group called IPsec VPN. This will be the group that is, if you're a member of said group, you can VPN into this device. Otherwise, you go to VPN, IPsec tunnels, and create new. Now this is going to be a remote access tunnel, meaning that people are going to be dialing in. We're going to use the FortiGate wizard on this. It's got a built-in wizard. The remote access one actually does a fairly decent job. You can go custom route and all that jazz, but it's not really necessary. So we're assuming that people are going to connect via, you know, for client VPN, just for the sake of this. We'll name this remote. Click next. Incoming interface. This is the interface that the connection would be coming into. Obviously, this would be your internet facing interface so we'll go when one in this case and obviously you, you don't see any connectivity here because this gate's not hooked up to anything other than me being wi-fi into it pre-shared key you want to use caution when creating your key you want it to be complicated for the sake of the video i'm going to use password but um you're really going to want to make this complicated and unique and then of course user group this is where you select the user group that you created previously basically what this says is when one's going to be listening listening for IPsec connectivity if they use this pre-shared key and they're a member of this group they can connect I'll click next now this is the policy and routing side of things so this is basically where you set up you know the local interface that they would be accessing, the local address group that they would be accessing, um, the client address range is the IP addresses you want to assign to the IPsec user when they connect, and then you can also do things such as you know assigning DNS, enabling or disabling split tunnel, allowing endpoint registration, etc. So, for the sake of the simple demo, LAN is going to be the interface for locally. I've already created an address group called local LAN. And all it is is an address object that says the subnet 192.168.1.0 slash 24 is called local LAN. Client address range for the sake of the video, this could be any private size or, you know, RFC 1918 private address space. Um, just for the sake of the video, I'll do 10.10.10.10 .10 .10 .10 or 10.10.10.50. It gives us 40 usable spaces. I don't have a DNS server that I would specify, so I'll let it use system DNS. But in situations like this, if your users are domain users, it would be good to list like a domain controller DNS here under specify. That way they can resolve internal 
um, a host using short name, etc. Uh, in this case, we're going to enable split tunnel. As mentioned, what split tunnel means is that the only traffic that's going to traverse this tunnel for the remote user is traffic that's trying to hit this subnet. Now, this subnet is one of the most commonly used subnets for for you know home routers and whatnot. 192.168.1.0/24 is almost always used on any home level network. So, I would suggest not enabling split tunnel, but for the sake of this video, we're going to. Um, if you disable split tunnel, that means all traffic, whether they're surfing the internet, checking their email, or accessing resources, will be acceptable over the tunnel. It'll be forced over the tunnel, which is cool because then you don't have to worry about any mishaps from overlapping subnets. You don't have to deal with the possibility that they're hitting bad sites whenever they're going through the internet, their machine gets compromised, and then it pushes it over the tunnel, etc. But those are things to consider. <laughs> So for this sake, we're going to leave it as a split tunnel. We're just going to assume all as well. And we're going to click Next. We're going to let it save the password. Um, these are just more like a preference setting. Uh, auto connect and auto keep alive. You know, it's not a big deal to me, so create. So this tunnel is now created. And if you double click it, go to it and edit it, you can see the interface is listening on. The uh, the range that the client can receive and the accessible networks that they should be able to hit. Um, the pre-shared key and then of course the user group that's used through XAuth. So get out of there. When you go through the wizard it automatically creates the uh, the policy for you which is easy peasy. Um, I'll go through and actually do a more advanced video that will go deeper into why you may want to do a custom tunnel so you can provide extra granularity. So, but this says, you know, the remote range, which is that range we assigned, to here, always, all. You know, that's just a basic policy. It's going to let anybody that connects to that tunnel come wide in. For the sake of making it work and the sake of this video, that'll be just fine. People like me, I like to have multiple groups and then assign multiple policy sets based on group. That way certain users can only access certain things. But, you know, that's from a security standpoint. So, in theory, this is set up right. The only thing that's left is setting up the actual port of client. So what you do is you go to, you know, add a new connection, connection to name, remote. Remote gateway, you would do remote gateway. This would be the IP address of the WAN interface, or it would be the FQDN of the WAN interface, etc. Save logon. I don't really have a guess assigned to this. So this, you know, whatever your username would be. So, for instance, mine would be in Pruitt for Mike Pruitt. Most FortiGates do not have a valid certificate on the WAN interface. Um, that's why you see this little red HTTPS. So you can just tell it not to warn so you don't have to mess with that. Oh, helps if I'm actually on the right setting. IPsec, not SSL VPN, sorry. Um, and then this adds in things like the pre-shared key, which we previously set the password. So our remote tunnel, remote gateway, our pre-shared key, our username. You can come in here to advanced settings and tell it, you know, these things. But it's going to be pre-filled with the basics, so you don't really have to worry about these. Very nice, very easy peasy. Click apply, now I have my tunnel. So I can come in here, and in theory if this FortiGate was connected, I would type in my password connect, and I would be able to access resources accordingly. So that's basically how it works. Um, and then if you ever get confused when trying to set up your tunnel, you notice whenever we finished the uh, whenever we finished doing it, creating the actual tunnel itself, I'm gonna run through again because I forgot to actually make mention of this. So 
so you set it up when you actually get done creating your tunnel come on make it different so it doesn't work out well it's not liking it because it has there we go so whenever you get done doing it it gives you instructions printable instructions on how to set up your your Florida client easy peasy um, I forgot to bring this up before so you know when you finish creating the actual tunnel you can you can see this and it'll tell you exactly what to do but it's it's really easy y you name your tunnel you enter the remote gateway and you set up your pre-shared key and then from there you use your username so that's how you set up a basic IPsec tunnel for remote access so easy peasy Japanese if you have any questions um, obviously I'm not walking you through the actual testing of it um, we can do some troubleshooting and whatnot videos before but if you walk through that wizard and you set up your client accordingly the policy will auto create Policy's already there, tunnel's already there, it'll be listening on the interface, and you're good to go. So, if you have any questions, give me a shout. Otherwise, you guys have fun and enjoy your new remote access IPsec tunnel.